Welcome back. All right, now we've got our transmission filter installed. Again, we had to extend it, bring it down a little bit, and you want it level in the pan. So B&M supplies in the kit, an inch and a half bolt and a 5 16 jam nut. Put it in there, tighten the bolt up till you get your filter level, tighten your jam nut against the valve body, don't over tighten it, and you'll be in great shape. This is a good time, again, to look at things like vacuum modulator. You know, in these older transmissions, you have mechanical valve body, you've got governors, vacuum modulator controls the shifting, and of course, it doesn't do you any good unless it's got vacuum to it. Always inspect the little vacuum line here, it's prone to cracking. It's under the car, something you don't see. Hooks to a steel tube, runs up to a manifold vacuum supply. In fact, if you could find a little piece of silicone tubing down here, because you're near the headers, that would be good. So modulator, the vacuum line. And by the way, here's a tip. If you're using transmission fluid and you don't have a leak, pull the line off the modulator. If any fluid drips in there, the modulator's diaphragm is bad. It'll go in the intake manifold. It makes a great top cylinder lube, but you'll never see it coming out the tailpipe. All right, now. We're ready, following the instructions again, ready to put on our oil pan. You see it's a beautiful pan, it's cast, has a nice big drain plug in it. And if you look at the drain plug, it has a couple features, a washer with an O-ring seal on it, and it's magnetic. Right there, that little magnetic tip picks up any of the uh, metal filings, helps keep them in place so they don't work their way back through the transmission. And what I recommend always is, like I said, heat kills transmissions, put a trans temp gauge in. Even if you can't control the temperature, if you see it getting high, you can shut down, let it cool. They have a great place, a 1-8 pipe tap right there. The temp gauge will screw right into it. That's where the probe would go. If you're not going to use a temp gauge, they supply a little brass pipe plug, put a little thread dope on it, tighten it up so it doesn't leak. Now I'm ready to put our gasket on. And again, I put a little blue thread locker on all of the threads, and that's what you want to use, the light stuff. Don't use any red, because you want to be able to take it back apart. I'll put this up, get a torque wrench, took it to specs. Meantime, let's see if Davey's doing anything besides messing around. All right, here we are. We got the prototype made. This is fresh off the computer. After several hours, this is all made up of individual fine layers of plastic, and here's what we have. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test fit this and see just how close we were. If there's any changes we have to make, then we can go back on the computer and make the changes, make up another one like this. Doesn't take long to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting these bolts in there and we'll just see if everything lines up. And if it does, then the next step will be actually making these things for real. It all fits, man. It fits just like a glove. I guess the next step now is to take that and go to manufacture and start making the real thing. Let's check out Sam, see what he's up to. Like I said, doesn't take much, a little bit of blue thread locker on these bolts. I don't, this is a medium strength. You can find the purple, which is a light strength. That'll work too. Like I said, do not use the red because it'll never come out of aluminum housing or cast housing. Now you notice I put the gasket on dry. It's a nice cork gasket. You've got a real thick flange on this beautiful aluminum pan, and we're going to follow the torque specs. Now, I see guys doing stuff all the time. You want to talk about getting in trouble? First off, RTV, room temperature vulcanized sealant, you never use that with a gasket. You can use it in place of a gasket, but never with a gasket. If you want to use something to help you keep the gasket in place, the trick is a little bit of string to a couple of the holes that you can pull out. You tie it up there. Or you can get some actual gasket adhesive, and you can use that. On a transmission pan, sudden death with RTV. When you bolt it up and it squishes and it makes like the spaghetti that goes down inside, let that get picked up and hit a governor or a valve in a valve body, and then you've got something that you've got to take apart again to free up. Again, I'm going to go ahead and torque these down, and I'll tighten my drain pan, take care of my little 1 8 pipe thread. Oh, by the way, if you get that little extension, if you do service later, so if you should lose it, Sometimes it'll stick to the filter and you throw it away. B&M does service that part separately. You can buy that. And as a little uh, favor to this kid, I'm going to install a really nice B&M stainless steel braided dipstick. First, I'll torque this up, put everything in place, make sure our linkage is, and we'll be in great shape. But right now, we're going to take a break. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, I got this pretty much wrapped up here. I double checked the tightness of the drain plug. I put some thread dope on the 1-8 pipe thread here for the little plug where we're not using a trans temp sensor. Got the bolts, I ran, went around once. I got an inch pound torque wrench. It costs 12 to 13 foot pounds, about 150, 160 inch pounds. And you want to make sure that you go around and do them crisscross. That way you don't get them all in one time. Get these things all torqued down properly. 
when I've got the torquing all done, I'm going to put it down because I've got to put fluid in it. We're going to use some B&M Trick Shift. It's synthetic. It's a replacement for Mercon Dextron. This stuff really helps to lower the temperature of your transmission. And of course, the deep sump pan out here in the Airstream, more fluid, keeps it cooler. The cooler you can keep an automatic transmission, the longer it's going to last. I'll finish torquing these all down, put it down, put our dipstick in it, and I got another little surprise for you. B&M's working on these Camaros. Right now, let's check with Davey. Okay, folks, here it is. This is the prototype that I just checked out. It was fit. Now, Kenji now has brought in the new unit. This is a new cast unit that we have. And here's what I want you to see it replaced. This is the old stock unit. You can see there's a big difference between the two. Number one, here you can see this is a nice beefy unit on here. See inside. But you can see you've got the veins here. What I like about this is when you want to drain this thing, it's easy to do. The old style, you have to pop the whole thing off, all your fluid runs out. Here they have a little drain hole right here, so you can take the plug out, drain it. That way when you take it off, you don't have oil everywhere. The other thing is nice about it is these two things right here. Tell me about those, Kenji. Uh, these are support bolts, and what they do is hold the caps on the bearings in the back and keep it for when you're high-performance driving, anything flexes, it'll keep everything all together. Yeah, good deal, and you adjust those after you've got it on, right? That's right. Okay, and of course, you got all these nice fins on here. This will help cool it. Well, this is a class piece, but you know, one of the real keys on this is to putting it on so that it doesn't leak, and the key on that is what? Well, we want to run a nice bead of a black RTV right around here, one continuous bead all the way around to make sure that we don't have any leaks or anything. Yeah, and you don't want to put a lot of it. I, those guys will put a whole bunch on there and it comes out everywhere. You don't want to have it flowing in here, do you? No, just a nice thin bead all the way around. Oh. It's always nice to let that set for just a few minutes so it starts to set up a little bit. That way when you put it on, you get a real nice seal. This is in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead and we'll put this up. Now, the other thing I want to mention here too, Make sure you clean this off real nice and clean. As you can see, we've removed the panard bar here so it's easier to work in here and for you to see. But you want to make sure these surfaces are nice and clean. And if they are and you put it together, you're not going to have any problems. fill plug. Before we do that, we'll fill it with fluid and we're in business. Let's check out Sam. I've got our oil pan installation all done, dipsticks in, and I refill the transmission. By the way, it took six quarts to fill it up. Now, normally when you drop a pan, the shallow pan, three, three and a half will do it. So make sure you check it good and run it, put it in park or neutral, and get it on the right mark. Now, I promise you a little bit of a look into the future here. And what they're prototyping for this first generation Camaro, 68, 69. Are you familiar with the Quicksilver shifter and the Mega shifter? One's a ratchet shifter, one's a gated shifter. And they've always worked great from B&M, putting them in these Camaros. Remember that old horseshoe shifter it came with? But you had to modify things. This shifter, they've got a design now goes right into the console, no modifications. And you got your choice of Quicksilver or Mega shifter, is that right? That's right, Sam. This is really pretty. Got some nice lines on this stuff. Now, they're going to upholster this. Is it going to be colored? It's actually going to be chrome. That's going to be chrome. Yeah. Fits right into the console with no modifications. No modifications whatsoever. It goes right in. That's great. That'll keep your console looking real nice, and you've got a great shifter so you won't miss gear. Pretty nice. What do you think, David? I tell you what, that is slick as all get out. That is a nice, nice piece. Well, I'll tell you what, Sam, I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of fun working here. How about you? Absolutely. This is a great little uh, project. We've got a few more things to do to this kid's car before we give it back to him, but uh, I think we're running short of time, aren't we? Yep. We want to thank Kenji for letting us come in here and do his shop, and thank you for all the stuff you've shown us. Folks, we've run out of time. We'll see you again next time here at Motorhead Garage. You want to take that home? Uh, no. Watch him, Kenji. He'll take it home. <laughs>